Hi, today we're going to be watching the Star Trek original series episode called The Deadly Years. There's something that I failed to show you guys. I actually recorded myself showing this to you guys and uh, I never posted it because I just, I don't know, I feel weird recording things that are different from what I always do and it was just showing off the photo novels that I got a while back. I did make a community post some months ago about this if anybody wanted to contribute into getting this into my hands. It's 300 full color authentic scenes. They're for 12 different episodes from the series. I'll show you inside but I can't I'm not I can't look. I can't look, but this is what they look like. Hopefully you guys can kind of see this is the episode that we're going to watch today, so I can't look inside. I got these from eBay. I think they were printed in 1978. So these are very old. These particular ones that I got are in very good condition. And some people did help contribute a little bit of funds to help um, get these before somebody else bought them. And I put uh, quite a bit of money up myself. And I just wanted to thank anybody who helped because some people did do it anonymously. Um, these are really cool. I can't obviously read a lot of these right now, but I can see from the cover of this that Kirk looks very old. It also shows like a preview on Paramount Plus um, where I see like some elderly looking characters. So unfortunately there was no way for me to not know that even without this just by clicking on the thumbnail here on paramount plus but anyways the deadly years i'm very curious about this one and let's just watch it thank you guys again for just being here and enjoying star trek with me and any extra support you give is also very appreciated um but not necessary and i just thank you guys i'm really enjoying your company all right let's watch it I see a teeny tiny Where little yeoman. Check out. Check that building. Take a look around. See if you can find anyone. They don't have flashlights when they come down. I guess they didn't. Don't expect to need them. Oh. Oh. Has he never seen a body before? A dead man. Cute little Chekhov. He's so young and he's he's still inexperienced compared to everybody else. This box like, interesting. Chekhov's like, ah! <laughs> Death by natural causes, old age. It's quite impossible, Doctor. I assure you that none of them would. I'm Captain Kirk of... You'll have to speak louder. Oh, good Lord. How old are you? I am 29. I am 27. <laughs> that doesn't check out. That does not match up. Can you tell me what happened? Elaine was so beautiful. So beautiful. That doesn't help us. But he doesn't understand. Yeah, they don't seem to really understand what's going on. Dr. Wallace, as an expert in endocrinology, I'd appreciate you working very closely with Dr. McCoy. My examinations have turned up absolutely nothing. It's possible that Romulans have a new weapon and are using this colony as guinea pigs. Hmm. I'm sure you understand that I am anxious to get the Starbase 10 to assume my new post. Yes, Commodore. We'll do everything we can to make sure you make your duty. Is there something I can do for you? I feel a little less the cool, efficient captain and a little more the old friend. Oh, they have a history. You know, you never asked me why I got married after we called it off. Because they called it off. Captain Kirk, Mr. Spock would like to see you on the bridge. Hmm. Old Sparks flying. I can find nothing at all out of the ordinary. What about the comet that astrophysics report? We're running checks on it. I've reached no conclusions as yet. Facilities at Starbase 10 are much more complete than those on board ship. Thank you. But we have a few facilities of our own here. I think the Enterprise will do quite nicely. Maintain standard orbit, Mr. Sutherland. You already gave that command, sir. Oh? Well, follow it. <laughs> yeah, I am. Well, I seem to be having a little trouble hearing. Perhaps a little hypersonic treatment might clear it up. 
Thank you. Astronomical section reports that a comet recently passed by. Check into that. I'm doing that, Captain. Mm -hmm. We discussed that earlier. I don't know what the problem is, Kirk. That's how I am all the time. <laughs> I just can't remember. Oh, no. The last one. They're all gone. Cause of death. Old age. Old age. You did what you could. Holmes, I believe you're getting gray. Well, you take over my job and see what happens to you. <laughs> What's your problem, Jim? Shoulder. Just a twinge. It's advanced arthritis. Spreading oh, arthritis. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I see the uh, makeup department got to have some fun with this episode. The Enterprise personnel who beam down to the planet's surface are all showing definite signs of aging. <laughs> Only Ensign Chekhov appears to be normal. Well, he's going to take longer to catch up to them, right? Aging at Bayer's rates, uh, approximately 30 years for each day. 30 years for each day? I'll be dead in two days. Two, three days. I estimate that physically we each have less than a week to live. Since our mental faculties are aging faster than our bodies. Total senility. Yes, Captain. What a way to die. Yeah. I'm having difficulty concentrating. And the normal temperature of the ship seems to me to be increasingly cold. You are perfectly healthy. That is, for any normal Vulcan on the high side of a hundred. How long do Vulcans live? Lieutenant Galway, why don't you go on down to your quarters and get some sleep? No. If I sleep, what will I find when I wake up? Ooh. Assume your position. Thank you, sir. I... I mean... I would be worried if I... Stupid place to hang a mirror. I would wake up at all. Stupid place to hang a mirror. <laughs> Get this mirror out of here. Yeah, hasn't he aged? I don't know, but I want to know. So she's young too, like Chekhov. His blood type, his heritage, his glands, his genes. His genes. Well, apparently uh, aging was not invented in Russia. When I married Theodore Wallace, I thought I was over you. I was wrong. How much older? your husband 26 years it's quite a difference look at me what do you see a man of morality decency handsome and strong and old what are you offering me jan love or a going away present oh he thinks she pities him so her husband was 26 years her senior is that what he said she said blood sample check off model sample check off skin sample check off I'm going to run out of samples Live. Oh, yes, I'll live, but I won't enjoy it. <laughs> He's being very dramatic. <laughs> Will you sign this, It'll be pretty soon he won't be able to do his duties as captain. If I may say so, sir, we have a due date at Starbase 10. We're going to be late. I want to do something to help. She was so concerned, I'll send a message to Starbase 10. You sent such a message this morning. Fuel consumption report. I gave it to you, sir, and you signed it. I... Your signature, Captain. Yeah, this... Time to put Spock in charge, maybe? Pretty soon here? Yeah. I believe it. It's nap time. Leave him be. Smart, I was just thinking. Yes, sir. Quite understandable. <laughs> I believe we have the cause of the affliction. Oh. What is it? The orbit of Gamma Hydra 4 carried the planet directly through the comet's trail. Below normal radiation levels, but definitely present. Radiations? How do they reverse that? I'll take a message to Starfleet Command. Aye, sir. And due to the proximity of the Romulans, better use code two. But Captain, the Romulans have broken code two. And use code three. Oh, Mr. Sulu, increase orbit to 20,000 mile perigee. Another 20,000, Captain? This is, I know my, uh, my biggest fear right now is cancer. My second biggest fear is dementia. As far as like happening to me or like somebody close to me. I've adjusted the environment in my quarters to 125 degrees. However, I- Well, I see I'm not gonna be making any house calls on you. 
<laughs> I wondered if perhaps there was something which could lower my sensitivity to cold. I'm not a magician, Spock. Just an old country doctor. Yes. As I always suspected. As I always suspected. <laughs> Mr. Spock, a starship can function with a chief engineer, even a first officer under physical power. But it's disastrous to have a commanding officer whose condition is any less than perfection. Mm -hmm. I would like you to take over command of the Enterprise. On what grounds, Commodore? Need I remind you, sir, that I, too, have contracted the same affliction. But it's not affecting you the same way. I am not fit for command. Well, if you are not, with your Vulcan physique, then obviously Captain Kirk cannot be. Yes. Good point. Sir, I do have duties to perform. Logically, you know he's right. You must convene an extraordinary competency hearing. I... Resist that suggestion, Commodore. Now, please don't make me quote a regulation which you know as well as I do. Very well, sir. Hearing shall convene at 1400 hours. I feel like Spock's human emotional side is coming out quite strongly right now. Did it hurt? Yes. They keep poking and prodding poor Chekhov. Oh, she's about to drop dead. She's dead. Oh. How long have we got, Bones? Matter of days, perhaps hours. Yikes. Are they gonna get a some sort of cure from Chekhov's blood or something? I don't... Responsibility of this hearing is mine. On the contrary, Commodore. The responsibility is mine. Spock is showing his age too. The makeup is really good. I am the captain of this ship, and I'm totally capable of commanding her. Is in denial. Did he order you to increase orbit? Yes, sir. Did he not several minutes later repeat that order? He did not. When I give an order, I expect it to be obeyed. I don't have to repeat my order. It was obeyed. Captain Kirk repeated his order. Kirk doesn't even... He, he doesn't even see it. You handed Captain Kirk a fuel consumption report, which he read and signed. Is that correct? Sir, he had more important... Just answer the question. Simply answer the question. I guess he forgot he signed it. Thank you, Yeoman. You may leave. Oh, she she's on his side. <laughs> Did Captain Kirk ask you to send a message about the comet using Code 2? Oh, yes, but he changed it to Code 3. After you reminded him that the Romulans had broken Code 2? <sighs> this just seems like a big waste of time. They have to be, like, who's working on the issue at hand if they have days or hours? Oh, poor Scotty. Describe subject's physical age. Between 60 and 72. I'm 34 years old. Is not his mental capacity degenerating even more rapidly? Yes, yes, but... You heard the computer's analysis. Plastic machine, Spock. You can't argue with a machine. Do you agree with it, Doctor? Yes, I do agree. Okay, so can we hurry this along? They're aging by the minute, by the second, and they're all just sitting here. <laughs> this is so frustrating. No, I am quite satisfied, Mr. Spock. So who takes over? To call any witnesses, Captain Kirk. I'm perfectly capable of speaking in my own defense, Mr. Spock. Are you? Captain, I would suggest... No, 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 it's all right, Spock, it's all right. <laughs> There's only one reason for having this here. I refuse to leave Gamma Hydra 2. Gamma Hydra 4, Captain. Yes, I slip of the tongue. Oh, <laughs> I'm a little confused. Who wouldn't be at a time like this? My ship's in trouble, my senior officers are ill. You've been... You've been in trouble before. Go ahead, ask me questions. I'll show you what I'm capable of. There's nothing wrong with my memory. <laughs> oh. We're in orbit around Gamma Hydra 2, right? No, for... Oh, no. <laughs> Anyhow, it doesn't matter. It does. A lot more to running a starship than answering all the fool questions. True. Ask me anything. <laughs> Anything. Oh. Is he even forgetting about the grav the gravity of their situation? No more questions, Captain. If you would leave the room so the board can vote, 
Good idea. Get the stupid voting over so I can get back to running the ship. Look, I am forced by regulations to assume command. Sir, you have never commanded a starship. The danger from the Romulans. Set a direct course for Starbase 10, Warp 5. Across the neutral zone? Immediately, Mr. Sulu. Maybe, maybe Sulu should be in charge. He's done it before. Wouldn't he or Uhura be next? I've been relieved. I'm sorry, Captain. Yes. You want command all along. First little excuse you get. Captain, I have not assumed command. Well, if you're proud of the... If you're not in command, who is? Commodore Stucker. Are you crazy? He's never had a field command. I order you to take command. I cannot, Captain. You're refusing a direct order? Who's working on the problem right now? You traitorous. Spock. Get out. I never want to have to look at you again. Aww. Oh, Jim, I'm sorry. Truly, I am. But I'm not all, Jan. I'm not. Well, physically and mentally, you are. And my brain's as sharp as it ever was. No, it's not. Her dress. Has she been wearing that the whole time? I didn't notice it. I love it. The pattern, the colors. I want it. Tell me. <laughs> How can he even ask that? What are you doing here? It would seem to be the place where I can be of the most use. Maybe you'd like to relieve Dr. McCoy. Oh, he looks even older. What about Chekhov? Nothing. Absolutely oh, nothing. Him too? We were on the surface together in the same spot. We were together all the time. He left us for a few moments. He left us? He left us. He went into the building. Into the building? The dark building. He was scared. He saw the dead body. Yes, yes. Now that that could be a trivial activity. Why something that I read once, just after the atomic age, uh, used for radiation sickness. Punk, you and Doctor Wallace get cracking. I gotta give props to the acting for McCoy because. He is doing really well at being the old, old man. <laughs> his mannerisms, his voice, he's made it gruffer. Lieutenant Uhura, let me know if we contact any Romulan. Romulan's approaching from both oh, sides. that is not good. Engineering wants instruction, sir. I'm with the stalker, what are your orders? He doesn't know. Oh my goodness. Should have put Sulu in charge. Right up to the bridge. No, Jim, you can't do that. Time has to go to the bridge. We're under attack. Let him go. Let him go. Keep trying to raise the wrong end. In this situation, he's more fit, I think, than this guy. No, my ship. Doctor, make the necessary computations and produce this serum. Let's go. It could cure or kill, Let's Doctor. Kill. Don't give me any Vulcan details. You're gonna die Spock, anyways. Just give me the shot. <laughs> no, I'll take the first shot. Can't. Jim, it could kill you. I'll die anyway. Yeah. Do it. Let's go. Ah. Oh. Ah. Sir, they fired another. Evasive action. They're just sitting ducks. The aging process has stopped. Okay. They know they have this. Well, then we have no alternative but to surrender. The Romulans do not take captives. Ooh, he doesn't even know anything about the Romulans. What am I going to do? Oh, you're the captain. You need to, you put yourself in this position. I've got to do something. Here we go. <laughs> Open up a special channel to Starfleet Command. Awesome. Code 2. But Captain, code... That's an order, Lieutenant. Code 2. We'll implement the struct order using Corbomite device recently installed. The Corbomite comes back. Since this will result in the destruction of the Enterprise and all matter within a 200,000 kilometer diameter, explosion will take place in one minute. They're gonna... Romulan's giving ground, Captain. Obviously, they tapped in as you expected them. Yes, yes. Warp factor eight, now. <laughs> They are zooming out of there. We got our captain back. 
They're falling behind. Are we out of range, Mr. Silver? Yes, sir. Heading for Starbase 10. Just wanted to assure you that I did what I thought best. You should know, however, that there's very little a Starbase can do that a Starship can. If I may say so, Captain, I am now quite aware of what a Starship can do. With the right man at the helm. You looking good, Doc? Feeling fine, so is Scotty. Yay! Anytime you're ready, Mr. Spock. I am quite ready now, Doctor. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, all in all, an experience we'll remember in our old age. Which won't be for some while, I hope. Yes. That was a tough episode. Well, before we get into the nitty gritty, first of all, it was a very good episode. I really liked it. I was getting a little bit frustrated at some parts. It's okay. Like the hearing, it just felt like not the right time. Like I know there's different avenues and things that have to be done according to regulation. But it just felt like everybody could see that Kirk was not mentally capable of running the ship. I don't know how much they've really talked about it in the episodes I've seen so far, but I, I know you guys have told me that the chief medical officer can relieve the captain from his post if he deems that he is not physically or mentally capable if he's not psychologically capable I guess would be the main main part of that so why couldn't they just do that why couldn't they just do it quickly because time is of the essence in this episode and that just seemed to take way too much time that they should have been using trying to solve the problem and figure out the remedy and and things like that but I just wonder if they never found a cure, and if Kirk and all the people that were affected had died of old age, was that guy really the person that should have been, that was supposed to be in charge? Shouldn't it have been like Uhura or Sulu? Because at least they have on-hand experience of being on the starship and being around Kirk when he's giving out commands, and you know, they learn from that. They can definitely learn from that a lot. And they can think, what would Kirk do in this situation? Whereas this other guy, no clue. No clue. He outranks them, but... Uh. Anyways, the reason that I said that that episode was tough because it was just really... When you put yourself in the position of one day your body won't work the way it used to, one day your mind won't work the way it used to and that's a really scary thing that maybe somebody my age shouldn't be worrying about right now but it is scary and I feel like the the mental the cognitive part is is most scary and that's why I think it's so important to try what we can to keep our bodies healthy to take care of our bodies and to take care of our mind and those things are so uh, closely linked together. But eventually, no matter what you do, time will catch up with you. And that's an inevitability that is really scary to think about. And I know that a lot of my audience is a lot older than I am. 50s, 60s, 70s, maybe older. Actually, I have stats. Okay, so my largest demographic by just a couple percent is the 55 through 64 years of age. It just kind of pains me to think about how such a large percent of my audience is getting to the point where aches, pains, arthritis, body not working, mind maybe not working as well as it used to, if not happening to yourself, saw your parents go through it, maybe your spouse is going through something, and how we would all wish, whether now or in the future when we get there, 
to go back and be like Kirk. Go back and, and have your youth again. And one of these days, I'm going to be right there. Just thinking, where did the time go? But maybe it's not as scary as I think. Maybe some of you can offer some insight into a mindset that, that maybe some of you guys have been able to acquire where it's okay to get old. I don't know. I just hope that everybody who's watching is healthy and happy as they can be and I just I hope everybody's well and if you're not that hurts me but isn't it amazing how something like Star Trek that came out in the 60s is connecting all of us together I think that's beautiful and even though we may be set apart by decades we can be brought together with Something that will speak to anybody of any age. All the lessons, the morals, the, the emotions that we get from a series like Star Trek, the original series. Okay, I didn't expect to get sappy today or a little bit emotional, but here we are. And I'm going to drink a lot of water right now and maybe do some little exercises before I get to the next video. Because that is important. We got to keep our strength up. Make sure you eat your vegetables, get your vitamin D, and very importantly, do some strength training, especially if you're older, especially, especially if you're older. All right, guys, away I go. Until next time, thank you for watching. See you guys in the comments, and goodbye.